So for this message, I'm going to be talking about turning our prayers from why into how. So for this Torah portion, it talks about counting the people up, the usual. But in the Haftarah portion in Hosea, wow. It calls out the unfaithfulness of Israel, comparing them to a prostitute. And even as Hesa read the first time, Hosea would then marry a prostitute as a picture of God's relationship with Israel. Before I get into the rest, I just want to quickly pray. Dear Lord, I just pray for your Holy Spirit to be on this place, that my heart and everyone's heart listening would just be softened to hear you, Lord, just as our Messianic teacher, Mr. Dima Berman, said last week that this will be a place inviting of you, that you will want to come in and just speak to us, Lord. Please just give me the words and the clarity that I know is from you to speak it clearly, peacefully to everyone here. Amen. So anyways, this last semester, I was failing organic, organic chemistry with a 55% in the class. I had roughly three weeks left in the class, and I had to make a comeback. I had a lab practical on May 15th, and there was some struggle in that. And the next day, I had a bunch of assignments due. I got so overwhelmed, and I was just complaining to the Lord. My dad actually was giving me some great advice, but my heart was nowhere near hearing any of it. I could only see my pain. I only had about a little more than a week until exam four, and then the final was a week after that. I felt hopeless. I prayed how to God, and as soon as I prayed how, the Lord's hand would begin to move in my life. I had a tutor, and Ochem was his bread and butter. I asked him to be there on the weekend, and the first day I started understand, understanding some things, but most of it was just going over my head. The next day, I went to a congregation, and I went there by myself and was a bit nervous. But I ended up set, sitting next to my life group leader, which made me feel so comfortable. The, sp the speaker gave a sermon about boasting in your sufferings. Wow. So, I mean, I tried to boast in my sufferings. Eh, a little tough. And then later that day, my tutor stopped by. The OCHEM material started to make more and more sense, and I feel like I was getting it. Now, speed up to my exam four. I felt ready, but the morning I woke up, I was so worried and nervous, and fear was beginning to creep in. I spent time with God, and even on my drive to school, I was worshiping God. I felt joy through the chaos. So I took the exam, and I even wrote on the front, this is where the fun begins. I took the exam and I used all the allotted time. The professor looked at my exam and was very impressed. So now I only have a week until my final exam. For the final, I began to learn these hard concepts with my tutor and it was somewhat making sense. Now the final, it, speed up to the final that was here, I actually wrote at, on the front again, this is where the fun begins. But boy, was high in for a rude awakening. I get the final, and in the first 20 minutes, I went through the whole exam, and there were just so many questions I didn't even know. I kept on praying, and slowly I would get one right here or maybe one right there, but there was still a lot like I just guessed on. I finished the exam after using all my time, and the professor was like, this was one of the easier exams. <laughs> what? <laughs> now, that would have been the case for me, but all the hard concepts I had learned was either not on the exam or barely on it. After calculating my grade before the final, it was a 77%. So I sent an email to my professor, like explaining some things on Saturday, and I didn't get an email back until Monday. I found out I got a B. Wow. And I made it by just two points. I went from a 55 to like an 80 in a span of three weeks. God was there the whole time, and his hand guided me through the whole journey, even though I did not deserve it. So now, sometimes coincidences happen, but when they all line up, 
I feel like that just has to be from God. Now, in my Bible reading for most of this time, I was actually reading through 1 Samuel. Now, Samuel's whole point of being here and being born was to be used by God. Now, notice I didn't say my tutor's name. I think we could all guess what his name was. Samuel. I asked for the, for the Lord for help and how to get through this tough time. And his way of showing me his hand was by using a person named Samuel, a man appointed by the Lord. I believe that sometimes what we think prayer is is more like complaining to God. Not saying we should not voice our struggle to the Lord, but we need to go past that, go deeper. We can't just sit in this mess we made for ourselves and then expect God to zap the whole situation to make it better. We need to ask how, and that is when you will see the Lord's hand. Another way with using the prayer of how in our life is dealing with our sin and lust. One movie that comes to mind is The Hunchback of Notre Dame. The song's Heaven's Light, Hellfire, is sung by the protagonist, Quasimodo, and the antagonist, Frollo. The song is about uh, Esmeralda, a gypsy girl, and in the book, she's a prostitute. The protagonist has this pure view of Esmeralda while Frollo has this sinful and lustful view of her. Quasimodo's view of the prostitute is like a picture of how Hosea was with Gomer, the prostitute, and how Hosea had good intentions for Gomer. Now, Minister Frollo, on the other hand, he's like res wrestling with these sinful lusts he adds towards Esmeralda. And in the song, he says, hellfire, hellfire burning in my soul. And later, he ends the song by saying, she will be mine or she will burn. Now, whether this be you or probably not, we all wrestle with sins or lusts or evil thoughts. Frollo never gave this desire to God and never asked how, but instead tried to justify the sin in his mind. I believe salvation it's not just being saved from an internal death, which is great, but it also means being saved from our sin, our wicked ways, and the lust we have in life. It is important that we give God our sin and our ways so we can be healed. Then this helps us to be witnesses of the goodness of God. To close, I want to end with a quote by Benil Dariush, a UFC fighter who just won his eighth fight in a row. Now, this fight was on October 22nd, 2022, and it was in Abu Dhabi. Keep that in mind. After the fight, they talked to him in the octagon, and he said this amazing truth about Yeshua. I need to dedicate this fight. My people in Iran, I know you're struggling. I know you're fighting for freedom. I know it's a tough struggle. I want you guys to know we're praying for you and we love you. Let me tell you one more thing. This might be the most important thing you'll ever hear. There is true freedom, a freedom that no one can take from you in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Don't ever forget that. If you remember one thing I say, remember that. Also, he, he says this, my crown will come from my Lord and Savior. Wow. Benil Dariush, he was a witness of the goodness and truth of Yeshua. He proclaimed and wasn't worried about what the crowd was going to say and what their thoughts would be in their mind. Now, we may not need to go to this extent, or maybe we do. But I know there's so many people in my life, in your life, that you can share the word with or just simply get a hot meal or just spend time with people in need. There is so much that can be done, and God is just waiting for you to show his love to people that he put in your life for a specific reason. Help us, Lord, to just change our prayer from why to how, and then be a witness of your goodness.
Let this phrase be key in our lives. I look at you, you look at me, and we are happy. Thank you.